I trust that everyone has a teaching syllabus. Uh, there's not a university in the world, you know, that has subjects without some sort of syllabus with it because what we retain just by hearing sometimes is limited. Uh, we would like you to, uh, to retain because these are functions that we'll be taking gloriously in this, maybe this year, right, we're stepped into now and uh, on into the Lord Jesus Christ returns again. On page 30 it says, what do angels do? What are their, what are their act activities that they perform on the face of this earth? Uh, what is the function of angels under the, directions, under the directions of the Almighty God? And then we began by saying that angels are exceedingly busy. They are a, a, a busy uh, messengers, creatures, persons uh, under the direction of the Almighty God. God respects and confers with angels uh, about us, about human persons, because there's an angel for each of us as a guardian angel. And uh, there are conferences relative that the whole Bible is full of that um, re regarding God conferring with angels regarding humanity. In Luke chapter 12 and verse 8 it says, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall I con shall, shall, shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. Uh, to me that is an amazing statement uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ himself reports to angels that he will if you confess him before this earth people, that he is the savior of the world, he is the Lord of your life, that he will confess your relationship before angels in heaven. Uh, that makes them very important to know that the Lord Jesus uh, will confess who you are, what you are, where you are, what you're doing uh, before the angels of heaven. And so when you do something unusual for the Father, and he is well pleased with you, he confesses that before the holy angels who surround his throne, as, he, as his courtiers and workers and whatever you want, wish to do, designate them for, uh, they, they hear what he has to say when he confesses your good behavior or your victories and glories that take place in your own life your overcomings, uh, that, that is a tremendous truth uh, for, us, for us to understand. And so let's look at it here. Angels worship God. The angels further, num the, the angels number, number one function, uh, of course, is to uh, relate to the one that created them, and that, that is God. And Revelation 7 and 11, and all the angels stood around about the throne and the elders and, and the living creatures, the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God. They worshiped God. It, 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 it is possible that we talk about God more than we worship God. I, I know that in uh, a church like ours, we do more worship time, probably not enough, more worship time than the regular denomination. Uh, and the regular denomination, they print a bulletin on Wednesday. And brother, the Holy Ghost has to conform to that bulletin. He's in trouble. I mean, that bulletin is law and order. And everybody reads off that bulletin on Sunday, and that's it. Uh... And I don't know that it ever includes, lay the bulletin down and start praising God. I don't think it ever says that, you know. To worship God is the primary, 
is a primary activity, not only for angels, but for you and for me. Uh, he, 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 he wants worship, he loves worship, he accepts mercy, uh, worship. He made us, we're the, we're the creatures of his own, his, his own abilities. Uh, and, and his own insides, he said, let, let there be a person called man, I'll make him. And so you're not an accident. You didn't just get here. Uh, the creative nature of God created you and brought you into being that, that you might, that you might uh, know him. Uh, and what's number three with me? It might be number two on your, on your sheet there. Angels also direct believers. What is their activity now? Uh, they, uh, their activity uh, has to do with being very busy, working, uh, worshiping God, and then we come to angels are directing believers. That's people on this earth. The, the, Bible, re the Bible records 104 appearances of angels specifically helping to direct the lives of men or women. And the Word of God. And that's trying to get your attention, isn't it? Over 100 times, God shows you how these beautiful creatures uh, assist persons who call out to God and who desire God and who want to, to be what God wants them to be, do what God wants them to do. So more than one half or one third of the 300 references to angels in the Bible show them talking to men more than one third of the time talking to human persons helping them assisting them to know their own destiny and how to live victoriously before God I, I feel the whole body of Christ needs this, this word from God, you know. Out on the mission field, they need to know about angels. Uh, it, it's possible if they're ignored, you get ignored. Maybe that's a problem in our own land here. That we ignore them completely and we get ignored because of it. And it, it, it is in the worshiping of God that... They, they move in to, to help and to bless and, and to undergird us. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Gideon, and said, and said unto him, Jehovah is with thee, you mighty man of valor. <laughs> That, that makes me laugh out loud, you know. Gideon was at that moment a coward and hiding. He was hiding from the enemy at that moment. And the angel called him a mighty man of valor. Man, that, that's, that's prophetic, I tell you. It did, it did happen all right. And maybe that's what made it happen, you know. Some of us need to be awakened to what we are. And so... It happened. So the angel of the Lord is a special designation. Not all the angels are called that, but there is a certain angel called the angel of Jehovah. I think he'd be a militant one, I'm telling you. And when he stood there in the full armor of heaven, the brightness of the sun was nothing uh, c compared, compared to it. He spoke a prophecy concerning Gideon to his face because he was not a mighty man of God at that moment. When the, when the angel arrived, Gideon was hiding from reality, hiding from war, hiding from the enemy. What a difference it can make when we get a message from another world saying, you're a man of courage, you're a man of valor. How wonderful it is. And so angels and their ministry, what they do, number one, they worship God. I think our life should be the same pattern as the reason I refer to it once again. 
And then we need to understand that they have a direct personal relationship with you and with me. Not with stones and rabbits and trees, but they have a relationship with us. You know, until you know the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you, you can't be saved. Until you know that God loves you, you can't love him. There has to be some knowledge imported that we recorded, that we know, that we know. And all the people said, let it be. So this angel of Jehovah, a uh, uh, militant one, uh, says, you're a mighty man of valor. That meant he's getting him dressed up to fight. He better believe it. <clears throat> all right, your, your next one says, angels protect believers. The Apostle Paul was on the raging seas on his way to Rome, as you remember, and a storm was blowing its mightiest against the little boat. It looked as if death was inevitable. They had it made. The boat was going to pieces. It was cracking up. The sails were falling off. And they were facing death. And then we find that an angel spoke to Paul and and as he spoke to Paul, he says, I want to tell you something. Acts 27, 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God. It would be so interesting to go back and look and see what the original would say between the angel of God and the angel and the angel of the Lord. You know, Got to see if it was a different person that we're dealing with. See, he says, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And the angel told him, he says, your life will not be lost. Nobody on this ship will be lost. <laughs> it sure looked like it. But the cargo will be lost. And, and, and so, uh, so often we hold on to the cargo. Well, we ought to be holding on to the, to the skipper, whose name is Jesus. And all the people said. Amen. Now, in our next one, it says angels are a source of information. Let's look, have a look at it. Gabriel announced John the Baptist's birth uh, to John the Baptist's father, who was a, who was a priest called Zacharias. In Luke chapter 1, verse 13, it says, And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Boy, I, I wish some angel would have named my boys. I don't know what they'd have been called either, but anyway, I, we... <laughs> Can't blame it on an angel. We did it. The angel says his wife that was barren could not have child. She was old now. You know, you know one of the funniest, strangest stories in the Bible. I've never even preached it to you. I ought to preach it sometime. Here is a young kid born in the family of a priest. Uh, he was so high up in the priesthood, must have been a high priest, that when he stayed too long in the Holy of Holies, they were going to drag him out because they thought he was dead. But he had been communing with an angel inside of there, you see. That was the father, Zacharias. Uh, we don't know how soon he and his wife Elizabeth died but we don't hear one thing out of John for 30 years. Brother, that's a long time. And then we find him a roughneck living out in the uh, woods, eating like, like an Indian would that before he'd gotten together with the rest of the tribe, eating off the trees, you know. and eating honey out of the beehive that he could find. 
and was so rough looking that his clothes were terribly rough. And no doubt he looked awful too with that beard. But the strangest thing is, Jesus came and he didn't know him. Those families had had no relationship in 30 years. He did not know who Jesus was. They were cousins. But he didn't know anything about him. Life can present some of the strangest situations, you know. You would have think with Mary running down to tell Elizabeth and finding Elizabeth about to have John and to tell her that she was with child and that she had seen an angel, they both had seen angels. You would have thought there would have been some relationship after that. And if the old folks died, you'd have thought John would have come and lived with them, you know. But we find him a man of the wilderness, roughshod, living out there among the trees, coming out of a priestly family. He was from a preacher's family who got along all right, who got along good high up in the hierarchy of, of the Judah religion. And look where he, the only amazing thing about him is he, he had retained his knowledge of God some way or another. That he, he knew God and he began to preach holiness to a sinful nation. It would be just like preaching today. Our nation today is very similar to what it was when John Baptist began to preach. Adultery from the top to the bottom. You see. Away from God completely. It's remarkable. It, it, it is remarkable. Verse 14. And, and, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Isn't that something? Uh, we don't have any story of that. But that's what happened, I presume. I'm sure. Verse 15, for he shall be great in the sight of Jehovah and, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. My goodness. He, he had the Holy Ghost when he got here. <laughs> Boy. And still there was no connection between the house of Joseph and this house. Or the house of Mary and Elizabeth. No connection whatsoever. And many of the children of Israel shall be, shall he turn to the Lord their God. We actually must not have the whole story in the New Testament of what this man did. Living out there like a hermit in the wilderness, alone. Preaching like fire, multitudes coming out to hear him. And he should go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I want you to drink in that last line there. The John Baptist ministry, and we may be part of the end time, end time, John Baptist ministry. And that, and that this person will turn the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord Jesus to come. You'd have to search pretty hard the Bible to find <laughs> how he did that. Of course, we know that Andrew, the first disciple of the Lord, was a disciple of John. John Baptist. And John the Beloved was also. Both of them were. And they both uh, came over on Jesus' side the same day that Jesus was baptized. And Zacharias said unto the angel, these words were delivered to him by an angel. That was in uh, verse 13. The angel said unto him. Zechariah said to the angel, Whereby shall I know this? 
for I am an old man. Now, that's the reason I told you. And my wife is well stricken in years. That's the reason I said they died soon after that. I don't know who took care of John. I don't know who brought him up. We have no record of who brought him up. But possibly before he was any even five years old, he didn't have any mom and daddy. Somebody else took care of him. He may have had, had an orphanage for priests there. I don't know. They t took care of the babies when the priests died. But we know one thing. When he got to be uh, at least 30 years old, he was, he was six months older than the Lord Jesus, of course. But uh, uh, he was ready for action. And we don't know how many years he'd been in action. That's the thing about it. We don't have any record, any record of that. It says we were both old. <laughs> they hadn't read the story of Abraham very well, had they? And the angel answered, said unto him, I am Gabriel. Woo! That's an archangel. That's not just an angel. That's an archangel. He commanded maybe millions of angels under him and his administration. I am Gabriel. that stand in the presence of God. And I am sent to speak unto you and to show you these things and these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. Uh, a lot of people miss God at the wrong time, you know. I just, with all my heart, don't want to miss God. I probably have missed him several times in my spiritual life, but if you question God, you miss what God wants to give to you. I'm sure there are those of us that God wanted to prosper, and we backed off in the face of God. And that's too big for me. I don't have the money to pay for that. Well, who's talking about money? We're talking about God. Are you here? If I had to wait until I had money, I wouldn't do anything in the world. You hear me? If I had to wait until I had money, if I had to wait until I had money to build this building here, we'd be up in the old building up there with a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank saying, oh my God, that's not five million. It's when you believe God when he wants you to do something and you start doing it. You just start functioning in it. You just start operating in it. That's when it, that's when it comes to pass. These things shall be performed because you believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Even his unbelief was not going to stop God from doing what God wanted to do. And that had to do with the birth of John Baptist. Now that's a minister of angels that I tell you, it's strong. That is a minister of angels that you say, well, <laughs> directed, directed by creatures from another world. I hope America hasn't gone so far until they can't get over into this type of thing, you know. Uh, I, ju I just hope that we can st still move into these things. And all the people said, Amen. yeah. Now in the last days before the Lord comes, there's going to be a tremendous function and operation of angels in the earth. We just trust that you and I, that we are ready for what God wants to do. Walking in simplicity. Say simplicity. Religion can be confusing when you try to, to take it in to analyze it, you know. Put it under a microscopic glass and say this, this, and that. You can't do that with divinity. When God says it, take it and do what God says do. And a good thing about it, it will work. And all the people said, all right, God bless you. Well, we'll take up right there in our next lesson. And the little blinking lights on the wall have just blinked twice. I mean, get off. So I'll have to get off.
But we, we got a great lesson here. Work on it this week. If you don't have a teaching syllabus, get one and, and start working on it. Uh, all the scriptures are here for you to work with. And we will, we, we will be in this at least next Sunday and maybe even the following Sunday. Uh, dealing with the activity of angels. Brother, they, they, they were busy in that case, weren't they? And uh, what God did do, God does do. Are you here? Let's believe it. Let's trust in it. Let's walk in it. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.